Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, February 28, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the TSA detains a libertarian blogger after seeing Bitcoin in his bag. And a Mexican holiday trumps the Bill of Rights in a t-shirt case that has reached federal court. Then, tension in the Ukraine builds as Russia moves into position for a possible military strike. All that, plus... InfoWars! InfoWars! Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Russian President Vladimir Putin stoked concerns that Moscow might be using its military might to sway the outcome of the three-month standoff in the Ukraine. They have already ordered snap combat drills near the border involving 150,000 troops and nearly 900 tanks, as well as Air Force drills training pilots to attack enemy forces. It seems like a clear indicator that Russia is preparing to invade the Ukraine. And now the interim government that's set up in the Ukraine after the violent coup that took place this week is calling on the United States and Britain to intervene militarily after unidentified soldiers stormed an airport in Crimea. The troops there, they made no apparent attempt to interfere with the running of the airport or trying to take over any key infrastructure. In fact, they were content with just strolling up and down the car park at a leisurely place, apparently deliberately for the benefit of television cameras. But today, Russia has admitted that it has moved troops into the Ukraine to protect Black Sea Fleet's positions. Now, Ukraine, of course, this interim government is accusing Russia of staging an armed invasion. Crimea is along Ukraine's peninsula, and it has very strong ties to Russia. The population there is nearly 60 percent ethnic Russian, and it's very pro-Russian as a whole. So just on the heels of Russian troops moving into Crimea, Russian lawmakers are now proposing two bills that would simplify both the annexation of new territories into the Russian Federation and the process of granting Russian citizens uh, citizenship to Ukrainians. This signals that Moscow may be attempting to absorb Crimea. An unidentified Russian official told the Financial Times, if Ukraine breaks apart, it will trigger a war. They will lose Crimea because first we will go in and protect it, just as we did in Georgia in 2008. Now, given the latest developments, including Russia's recent military buildup and Sevastopol's city council handing power to a Russian citizen Monday evening, while more than a thousand protesters were outside chanting Russia, Russia, it's highly unlikely that Moscow will be giving up Crimea without a fight. But clearly indicating just how involved and what a central role the U.S. played in the overthrow of their democratically elected government there. Ukraine's new interim prime minister is a former banker who met with both John McCain and Victoria Nuland weeks before Ukraine's President Viktor Yanukovych had even fled Kiev. So they were planning this weeks in advance. Now, back in December, around the same time that top U.S. diplomat Victoria Nuland announced that the U.S. had invested $5 billion to help Ukrainians achieve a new form of government, Senator John McCain met with Svoboda party leader Ole Tiyanabok, and they shared the same stage at an event during which McCain gave the United States blessing for the opposition revolt. As recently as three weeks ago, Newland met with both Tiyanabok and Arsene Yatsenyuk, who is now Ukraine's interim prime minister. And in a leaked phone conversation that we played on Infowars.com, again, Newland was caught red-handed scheming to install Yatsenyuk in the government before President Viktor Yanukovych had even fled Kiev. So we can definitely see the new, the new World Order bankster motives going on there to set up this EU puppet government. Now, Yatsenyuk's history as a banker makes him the perfect candidate to help assume this role of technocrat and give over, you know, sell the Ukraine into the IMF debt slavery. And according to Zero Hedge, they report today, it's already begun. The annexation of the country's banking system by a benevolent Europe 
is complete. Ukraine's National Bank has imposed temporary limits to withdraw money from foreign currency deposits to sums equivalent to no more than what would amount to about $1,500 a day, also known as capital controls. Now, Ukraine's currency is crashing at a record pace, and so they'll limit the amount of foreign currency in circulation. The people there are, of course, able to withdraw as much of the country's currency as they wish because the country can just print up as much as they want to. So in summary, first the banks are going to abdicate their control to a pro-European central bank. And now the citizens face the first of many capital controls, which will simply aggravate the fund outflow. Uh, Even more, it's going to lead to an even faster drop in foreign reserves. And then they report that we will see inflation and a counter coup, much like we saw happen in Egypt. Now, today on The Alex Jones Show, Joel Skousen came on and he offered an alternative angle to what's happening in the Ukraine. I highly recommend you check that out. Uh, What he had to say was that the Russians aren't just so innocent as we might seem, that they might have a little bit more going on. It might not be as simple as just the EU and Soros in there, but perhaps the Russians manufactured this crisis as well, as well um, sent some fake Ukrainians in to take over this actual authentic Ukrainian uprising because no doubt the people there are well and truly tired of being controlled by Russian corruption. So I definitely highly recommend that you check out that interview with Joel Skousen today on The Alex Jones Show if you're interested in what's going on in the Ukraine. It gives a different angle. It's complicated, very complicated. So that's a really, really good interview. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com.